In today's video, we're going to be giving you a roundup of all the latest hair loss news in October. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So guys, without any further delay, let's get into it. The monthly hair loss roundup for the month of October 2020. Now guys, last month we broke the news about LG's low-level light therapy helmet. The helmet has been approved by the relevant government agency in Korea and has also been cleared by the FDA as a class 2 medical device for use at home. Now, LG had originally stated that they wanted to bring the device to market by the end of 2021. And in a statement they put out in October, they said that they would be releasing the helmet in Korea by the end of the month. Now, to the best of our knowledge, this deadline was not met. We couldn't find any vendors or a price for the helmet, but it should be any day now. What we did get though is a few more pictures of the helmet as well as more details on its operation. The helmet will have a combination of 146 laser and 104 LED lights that together will work to stimulate hair growth. And it will support three modes. A, a total care mode to treat the entire scalp. B, a frontal area mode. And C, a crown mode. Apparently, and guys take this with a grain of salt, I'm only reporting what's in the news stories, the device will quote, recommend the best hair treatment options after its sensors analyze and uses hair loss. Guys, what do you think about this? Does this sound a little bit gimmicky? Or do you think LG's helmet will revolutionize the treatment of hair loss? Let us know in the comment section below. So we had two trial updates last month. In the first, we had the announcement by Histogen that they completed their phase 1B stroke 2A trial for androgenetic alopecia. So this was an early phase trial and its purpose was primarily to assess the safety and tolerability of their hair loss treatment, HST001. Now, HST is short for hair stimulating complex, and, and it's an injectable treatment intended to be administered by a doctor. So it's not something that you'll be able to buy at the pharmacy and then use at home. At this point, we have very limited information on the treatment, but the goal, and I'm quoting from their website here, is to enrich for growth factors including KGF, VEGF, and folistatin, which are involved in signaling stem cells in the body and have been shown to be important in hair formation and the stimulation of resting hair follicles. According to Histogen, in earlier pub unpublished research, 84.6% of men showed new terminal hair growth. And after three months of treatment, there were statistically significant increases in total hair count, terminal hairs, and hair thickness. For those of you who want more information, I've linked to the HST001 page on Histogen's website in the description below. In other trial news, Cassiopeia have announced that they have completed enrollment into their phase two trial of clascoterone for female pattern hair loss. The study recruited nearly 300 women with pattern hair loss and will last six months. The trial will involve testing multiple dosages to find the optimum. Now guys, clascoterone is a topical antiandrogen, one of a few currently in development for hair loss. It was recently FDA approved for the treatment of acne making it the first novel drug to achieve this distinction in nearly four decades. And it's very close to being approved for hair loss in men. It successfully completed phase one and two trials and is scheduled to start phase three research very shortly. Like with acne, if it's approved for hair loss, it would become the first new drug in decades. And right now it's the undisputed number one contender for the job. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll know that one of our favorite themes is blood flow and it's linked to hair loss. In the video now on your screen, which has been viewed by hundreds of thousands of people, we give a basic introduction on how reduced blood flow is one of the most critical factors in hair loss. In a recent paper out of Tokyo, we had the first experimental test of the hypothesis that reduced blood flow and oxygenation are linked to hair loss. The researchers surgically induced so-called ischemia on lab mice. This is simply the scientific name for a state of reduced blood supply to the tissue. So they depilated the mice and then used surgical wounds to create ischemia on one side of the groin and then matched non-ischemic wounds on the other side. Now the mice in this study have four types of body hair. And you can see in this graph that after two weeks and for each type, 
the hairs on the ischemic side were significantly shorter than those on the non-ischemic side. So again, ischemic side has lower blood flow, non-ischemic control has normal blood flow. Similarly, for the numbers of hair follicles, which were substantially higher in the non-ischemic area, i.e. where blood flow was intact, the hairs in the ischemic region were also thinner in diameter. The authors concluded that ischemia, quote, makes the hair shafts thinner, decreases hair density, delays hair growth, and affects the hair cycle in mice, all very similar to the clinical symptoms of androgenetic alopecia. Now, a corollary of reduced blood flow is a reduced oxygen supply. So the researchers also examined the effect of oxygenation on the hair growth of human scalp hair follicles in vitro. The follicles were cultured in 1%, 6%, and 20% oxygen. The 6% group corresponding to the follicles' normal environment in the human layer of subcutaneous fat. The 1% is what you call hypoxic, a condition with abnormally low oxygen levels. In this image, you have the 1% group on the left, the 6% in the middle, and the 20% on the right. Photos were taken at 0, 2, 4, and 7 days. As you can see, the 1% group basically stopped growing after 4 days, while the hairs in the other two groups kept on growing. The authors also did various experiments with live mice, looking into the effects of a high oxygen environment on their hair growth. They found that exposing the mice to a higher than normal oxygen environment for seven days accelerated hair growth in the anagen phase and delayed transition to the catagen phase. The catagen phase being when the follicle stops growing and then starts regressing. Now guys, bear in mind that these results are on mice, but they emphasize yet again the importance of blood flow and oxygenation for the proper functioning of hair follicles. Now, as you probably know, hair loss from chemotherapy treatment is one of the most psychologically devastating side effects of treatment. But to date, we have had surprisingly little research about the changes in the follicle's microenvironment that happen as a result of chemotherapy. And this was precisely what this recent paper out of Japan tries to answer. So, the researchers took live mice and injected them with cyclophosphamide, a powerful anti-cancer chemotherapy. Among other methods, they used sophisticated microscopy to study the changes in the vasculature surrounding the follicles. The results? Just as you'd expect. The blood vessels around the follicles decreased in diameter, meaning less blood flow to the hair. But, interestingly, the researchers also found that the chemotherapy affected so-called vascular permeability. This refers to the degree to which molecules can pass through the walls of the blood vessels and reach the surrounding tissue. The combination of increased vascular permeability and decreased vascular density might very well turn out to be the cause of chemotherapy-induced hair loss. Hopefully, we'll start to see similar studies with cancer patients and in the process get a better idea on how to prevent this. So guys, the stories on the link between COVID-19 and hair loss just doesn't seem to end. It almost seems like we're experiencing a hair loss epidemic and missed the actual virus one. Now, the hair loss seen in people with COVID is not actually due to the virus itself. Or at least, that's the consensus at the moment. It's an acute type of hair loss called telogen effluvium. And it happens when a significant percentage of hair follicles simultaneously switch the final phase of their cycle, the telogen. This shock to the follicles is typically caused by a traumatic effect, such as serious illness, surgery, medications, pregnancy, or a stressful life event. And in the case of COVID, you have the stress of going through the actual disease, as well as having to quarantine, lose days of work, and so on and so forth. Now, telogen effluvium typically occurs three months after the stressful event, in this case, COVID illness. And fortunately, in most cases, the hair loss will resolve spontaneously. But it's not just COVID sufferers who experience this hair loss. There are anecdotal reports from dermatologists all over the world that the number of patients presenting with telogen effluvium has exploded since March. Guys, do you think that the virus situation has affected your hair? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And as always, guys, let us know if we missed any major stories from October and we may be able to include them in a future installment. Guys, if you want to learn more about the eight steps that Will used to reverse his hair loss or some information about dermarolling, then make sure to click the videos on the screen now.